CBC News has learned that Rachel Notley plans to step down as leader of the Alberta NDP. We expect her to make the announcement sometime next hour. The CBC's Elise Von Schiel is live in Calgary uh, with more. So Elise, what do we know? Well, not much so far besides mm -hmm. the fact that this morning at around 1030 Mountain, Rachel Notley called together a caucus meeting and had staff there as well, where she let the people closest to her know what she was going to do next, which is that she is not going to continue as leader of Alberta's NDP. So one of the MLAs who we spoke to called it the end of an era. And in, in a lot of ways, it really is. She was elected about 10 years ago as the leader in 2014. And now we're seeing the party having to define going forward what the party is without Rachel Notley as leader. Now, she was significant because that victory that the NDP had in 2015 ended about 40 years of rule by conservative parties. And of course, now we're back to a conservative government here in Alberta. So those four years that Rachel Notley was premier uh, were, were the upset in kind of the history and the trend in this province. She took over at a time where the province was dealing with a lot of economic concerns around oil prices and around jobs and the economy, um, obviously lost in 2019 to Jason Kenney, and then came back to contest one more election in 2023, earlier uh, last spring, where it looked like the NDP had a shot to win. They ultimately didn't. That was a really hard loss for them because it looked like they could be poised to go back into government. And that's when the question started about not what Notley would do next. And so now we know 2014 was the year that brought her in as leader. 2024 is going to be the year that the party determines who the Alberta NDP is without their longtime leader and former premier, Rachel Notley. And Elise, I mean, we should really just, uh, you know, talk about that 2015 election victory because it was astonishing. If anyone had said that the NDP is going to become a majority government in Alberta, even a couple of months before that election, I think people would have just dismissed that as, as nonsense. And, and so that, that accomplishment was something else. And Rachel Notley herself was very personally popular, has been very personally popular, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that was, I, I would caution anybody to not bet on Alberta politics. Your odds are not very good. <laughs> it's a bit of an unpredictable thing. And absolutely, even you saw in 2019, when uh, Jason Kenney and Rachel Notley were contesting in that election, Rachel Notley's name and face were everywhere. Her personal brand is very, very strong, even maybe it's sometimes stronger than what the party's brand has been in the province. Uh, and so it will be very interesting to see how the party has to adjust because they're brand, the popularity, the approval ratings have been largely tied to the leader and sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes that's a bad thing. So there will be, I'm sure, a bit of an identity crisis and I'm sure that will be one of the themes in the leadership race going forward, which we should know a little bit more about probably around Noon Mountain here when we hear from Notley herself. And then Elise, I know you you may not know this, so if you don't, you just, you don't, but do we know anything about what Rachel Notley has plans, plans uh, for beyond? Uh, her leadership as the as the leader of the NDP? Not at this point. Um, from people that we've spoken to, we can probably expect her to stay on as leader until a new one is chosen. It'll be pretty unlikely that we'll see an interim leader. After that, who knows? She is, of course, still an MLA for Edmonton Strathcona. Maybe she'll stay on to finish her term there. Maybe she won't. I'd say probably everything's on the table based on conversations I've had with people around her. And I'm sure we will get more information on that from uh, her herself in under an hour. So I will be listening along with you to figure out exactly what she's got planned. Elise, appreciate uh, your reporting on this. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andrew. That's the CBC. For more on this story, I want to bring in Christina Frangu. She's a writer and journalist in, and editor in Calgary. And I pitched you this morning because I read your Chatelaine article and learned so much about Rachel Notley. So I want you to share some of that with us today. So thank you for joining us on the program today, Christina. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Yeah. First off, though, before we get to some of the background and some stories about Notley. Did you expect this um, announcement, you know, today or in the near future? I expected it around this time. Uh, when I spoke to Rachel, it was in May, maybe even a little bit before that, uh, for this profile. And, and at the time, she wasn't talking at all about what her plans were after the election. She kept saying all she wanted to talk about was the fact that she planned to win. But then when you spoke to party insiders, what they were saying is that she'd stay some months after the election if they lost and then step away to give the party uh, time to find a new leader and be ready in time for the next election. So this is pretty much what people were expecting, I think. 
And one of the things you say in your article is that Rachel Notley is fiercely private. This, although she led most of her life in the political realm, right? Yeah, I mean, Rachel Notley really grew up in Alberta politics, and she grew up in Alberta's NDP. Uh, her father was the head of the NDP in Alberta. Her parents met at a political meeting. Um, and it, as many people in Alberta and probably across the country know, Rachel was a student when her father died in a plane crash mm -hmm. uh, when she was 20 years old, and his funeral was national and international news. And so she has really spent her whole life in politics. One of the things, too, is it's good to remind people is that uh, Rachel Notley's party had more seats for women than any other party. Women really connect with her and her message. Yeah, and you know, this has not been by accident that women um, had so many seats under uh, Notley's government. She, um, as soon as they were elected, she made before they were elected, she made it a point to have absolute uh, gender parity in her cabinet and in her appointments. And at the time, she was the first government in Canada to do that. And she's also, you know, she she has she talks about being a parent and trying to balance being a parent and being in politics. Um, you know, there's a scene in my story where she'd gone to, I think it was a dance competition with her daughter um, and with an with another uh, mom who was also in politics. And, you know, Rachel, you know, being there for their kids, but also getting up in the morning and wanting to run uh, and then not having her security detail with her. Yeah, let's talk about security detail as well, because one of the things I noticed covering politics, she always had security around her, so much so we got to know the security detail because they're always in and around her. Now, this was midway through her premiership. You mentioned this in your article, too, but it was CBC that reported that Notley had received more threats than any premier in Alberta's history. Why is that, do you think? I think well, she didn't want to talk I about it. No, she never wants to talk about it and no one wants to talk about it. And as she pointed out to me, it, it probably wasn't so great for Jason Kenney either. I think by the year, this gets worse for people in politics. It's especially hard for women in politics. And, and, and maybe for a while, it was especially hard for a left-leaning politician in, in Alberta. Um, but as she said to me, you know, politics is a privilege and with every privilege, there's a cost. It when you think back on your interview with Notley and sitting there with her, and this is one of the things I really like to learn as well, what is she really like? Because when the camera comes on, there's always a facade everybody puts on, really. Yeah. I mean, I think I think Rachel is as like policy wonkish in person mm -hmm. as she comes as she comes across uh, in front of the cameras. That is that is her absolutely. She is uh, everyone. The, when you meet her, well, when you ask people about her, they always say you'll be surprised at how short she is, and that is very very true. <laughs> um, and I'm also not very very tall, uh, but yeah, she's 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 small, but she's she is like full of energy. Like she hustled into the interview, she hustled out of there, she didn't stop talking to me. The entire time and she just she knows this province um inside and out and and there's no relying on someone else to help her out with information she she's got it there personality wise uh, as well you're talking about her how she she swears a lot that was one of the things yeah <laughs> And this is, this is, I mean, if you ask people who know Rachel Notley about Rachel Notley, they'll say two things. They'll say she's not very tall and she swears all the time. Um, and, and that is true. I don't think she swore in my interview, but many of the people I spoke with could give me examples of, um, you know, a couple of four letter words popping out from her every once in a while. Yeah, it's always interesting to find out the persona behind the politician, for sure. And you really did in that article, so I really appreciate it. Looking forward, just from your knowledge, where do you see her going now? Because they're not ruling out she might stay on as an MLA, but I don't really suspect that. What about federal? Uh, I mean, I, I would just be, I would just be guessing. Uh, yeah, because she absolutely. Again, you know, again, she's very private about her her plans. Um, I would be surprised to see her run federally. 
Um, there is some space between the Alberta NDP and the federal NDP. Um, she is, I, I actually spoke with some federal liberals for my story who, who right. said that they couldn't go on the record because they had a ton of respect for Rachel Notley and they didn't want to harm her by coming out, uh, saying how much they, they liked her and they thought that might be harmful for her in Alberta. I would suspect she might take a little bit of time and relax and, and do nothing for a little bit. I, I think that she has deserved that, but then I think she will come back. I wouldn't surprise, be surprised to see her come back in some sort of, um, in, as a lawyer, um, uh, I, I don't know what it will be, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think Rachel Notley will stay quiet for very long. No, I, I don't think so either. I'm sure these questions are going to be asked of her at her press conference a little later. But thank you so much for digging into this. And thank you again for that uh, lovely story that you did do to give these personas of these politicians. Really appreciate having you on. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, Christina Frangu is a writer, journalist, and editor and joined us from Calgary.